Rightio, we're out to 92 feet at the moment, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, the two lines going across the top, uh, our bombs out the back on our downriggers, and sitting down at about 60 feet, there's a beautiful fish, if you have a look on the left-hand side of the screen there, with the orangey colour in the arch. It's come up and had a look and just ducked back down a bit, but hopefully in a minute, Billy, one of these rods are going to go off. We're out to 110 now. We're coming over the top of that drop off. And hopefully there's either a rainbow or a Chinook just looking at those Tassie devils. Go, Johnny. It's cutting the water all right. Oh, I'm feeling a bit of weight now. Yeah, I reckon it's a bit better fish. You've got a lot of drag running there, mate. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of drag. They do grow quick and fat here, mate, because there's so much, so many fish in here that they eat. Another rainbow trout. Cool, Johnny. I'm Bill Classen, editor of Freshwater Fishing Magazine, and it's been 30 years since this photo was taken at Lake Purrumbee. But for all that time, there's one thing that's really intrigued me, and that's why do the trout and salmon in these lakes grow so huge, so fast? So join me on a road trip as I head back to a volcanic age to discover why a time of explosive eruptions might have the answers I'm looking for. So where are we going to get the fish today? Where I do you want to fish? We'll head over this side. Oh, All right, okay. Yeah. Just imagine being right here 20,000 years ago. The earth steaming, the world moves beneath your feet, and then suddenly there's a massive explosion. The result is a deep volcanic crater that fills to become Lake Bulimeri, one of Australia's deepest natural lakes that produces the ideal environment for our trout and salmon. So let's look further and find out just why. Johnny, what have we got here? Uh, got a shrimp net here and um, hopefully we might have some bullheads in it. And I'm betting this is why the salmon and trout are that big in this lake. And yes, look at that. So these are the big fellas. These are, you call them bullheads. I call them gudgeon. And the reason why the fish here in these volcanic crater lakes get so big. Let's go catch a few. This is the first clue to the reason why trout and salmon just grow so quickly in the lake. Food. And you only need to look below the surface of the water to see what I mean. The rich volcanic soil surrounding these lakes is full of nutrients and helps aquatic plants to grow profusely. The plants provide the food and habitat for microplankton, which in turn provides the food source for the small fish like galaxids and gudgeons to thrive. There's more trout food swimming around here than you can poke a stick at. Aquatic scientists call it forage. And just like in the famous Lake Taupo in New Zealand, you fill a lake with forage and the trout will just thrive. Trout and salmon in these lakes grow quicker than anywhere else in Australia and sometimes to enormous sizes. Trolling lures has been by far the best method to catch these fish during the cooler months while downrigging and deep water bait fishing has proved best in summer. To try to prove that these fish spend most of their time hunting this forage, we decided to troll lures that match them in both size and colour. Here we go. Yep. That's a good fish. That feels better, John. Yeah. We've got a bit of weight to this guy. Could be anything here too. There's brown, good brown trout in here. Chinook salmon, and of course rainbow trout. Oh, here we are. Mate, first fish of the day. And you predicted it correctly, a rainbow. Yeah, it's a nice little rainbow. It's and little... that would be a fish that was stocked here in Bull and Mary, what, last year? Last year, most probably fairly late last year. How quick do they grow? Unbelievable. Right. Good stuff. Yeah, well done. Well, mate, let's get it back and get me my big one. Not a problem. Because Bull and Mary is landlocked, all the trout and salmon are unable to spawn naturally in the lake, and so the trout species rely on regular stockings by fisheries to maintain a healthy population. This began back in 1923 with the first stocking of 4,100 rainbow trout fry into Lake Bull and Mary. And in the heyday of the 40s, trout and salmon from 15 to 25 pounds were common. In fact, in 1937, a world record three-year-old rainbow trout 
weighed in at a whopping 18 pounds, nine ounces. I reckon it's gonna happen again any yeah, minute. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I'm waiting. <laughs> I reckon it's gonna happen. There's fish there. Yeah, just here. How you going? Oh. Not jumping, so it could be a Chinook. Could yeah, be a salmon. Chinook. Oh yeah, you see a nice silvery. Silvery, yep. yep. Can you a bit closer? Looks like it's been hit by something too. Here you go. Beautiful. Beautiful little rainbow. Little rainbow trout. Yeah. Had a bull of merry. Lovely, we'll just let this guy go. Our rainbow trout originated from an importation from New Zealand in the late 1800s, which in turn originated from stocks out of Lake Tahoe in California, USA. It was great to see that there are plenty of small trout taking our lures, and the way they're feeding, they're going to be the trophies in years to come. He's going to run over. Who's a better fish, John? Chinook or a uh, rainbow, do you think? Ah, oh, it's a Chinook. Chinook. Carefully get this guy up. A little salmon. Well, you've got a little two hook single rig there. I need to be careful of that. And the difference between the salmon and the rainbow trout is pointy tail, black fins, and much more pointy lower jaw. Salmon can't spawn here naturally, and of course rely on stocking to maintain their population. The first salmon came in in 1936, but the current stocks came in from the Columbia River in Oregon, USA in 1966. And luckily for us, a thousand of them were kept at Snobs Creek for the future. And these are the basis of our population now. Rightio, we're out to 92 feet at the moment, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, the two lines going across the top, uh, our bombs out the back on our downriggers, and sitting down at about 60 feet, it is a beautiful fish, if you have a look on the left-hand side of the screen there, with the orangey colour in the arch. It's come up and had a look and just ducked back down a bit, but hopefully in a minute, Billy, one of these rods are going to go off. We're out to 110 now. We're coming over the top of that drop off. And hopefully there's either a rainbow or a Chinook just looking at those Tassie devils. Go, Johnny. It's cutting the water all right. Oh, I'm feeling a bit of weight now. Yeah, I reckon it's a bit better fish. You've got a lot of drag running there, mate. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of drag. They do grow quick and fat here, mate, because there's so much, so many fish in here that they eat. Another rainbow trout. Cool, Johnny. Oh, you were lucky, just lure just fell out. <laughs> and look how fat he is too. Unbelievable. Eh? Growth rate in these uh, in these volcanic crater lakes, really quite special. You see some fantastic growth rates. And when you realise this fish has only been, this little rainbow trout's only been in here for 12 months, you can just really see how fat and big they get, you know. It only would have gone in about this big yep. 12 months ago. Oh, we're on, we're on, we're on. Oh, that's better. Yep, we're on again. Oh, that's nice. Definitely a rainbow. Good to be in a lake like this. It's like it's naturally cold. The, the trout and the salmon just love the conditions in here. Not to worry. Okay. Well done, Billy. Yeah. Now that's same, the same year class fish and what a beautiful specimen. Like, I mean, this guy is on steroids. Taking that brown nosed bomber and he's hooked up on the other flat line that you're trolling. Same year class, but look how fat that fish is. A nice little short head and big fat body. Yeah, just been gutsing on those galaxids and those uh, bullheads that you showed us earlier on. Yeah, that's for sure. Beautiful. Oh, I like the bow wave on it. Bit of fish. Oh, it's a nice fish. And a big angry fish. 
How you going there, John? You under control? Yell out when you need a net. This salmon is ample evidence of how quickly they grow. Stocked in the lake as a yearling, and now already two kilos, and not at the end of its second year in the lake. Nice fish, Johnny. Yeah, nah. Looks like it's got a bit of weight about it. It does. Oh, yes, John. Good man. Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, I'd say three-year-old, been in the lake two years, two yep. kilos. Yep. Good Definitely. fighting Chinook salmon. That's the big salmon you're after. Yep. Very, very nice. You got him on a um, Tassie Devil. Yep. Nice little, like a rainbow trout pattern. Yep, a spotted rainbow. In addition to the rainbow trout and Chinook salmon, brown trout was stocked in 1995, Atlantic salmon in 2011, and finally brook trout in 2016 which makes these crater lakes the most complete trout and salmon fishery in the country. Well, Johnny, I've had a look at what Bull and Mary has had to offer, and I think it's about time we go and have a look at your lake and your caravan park over yep. at Purrum Beach. See if we can get ourselves a big brown. That'll be good. Having been so impressed with the abundance of fish in Lake Bull and Mary, it was time for me to continue my road trip to Purrum Beach as I really wanted to compare the food chain and the behaviour of the trout in this nearby lake. The bonus being that I stood a good chance of tangling with one of those huge brown trout that call Purrum Beat home. Purrum Beat is another volcanic crater lake located not far from Camperdown and Bull and Mary. Both crater lakes share the volcanic nutrient rich soil, but unlike Bull and Mary, which is slightly salty, Purrum Beat is a pure freshwater lake, and this means a different environment and clearer water. John actually owns and manages the beautiful Purrum Beat Caravan Park, which is located right on the edge of the lake. This setting is truly like no other in Australia. At one end of the lake is the idyllic caravan park, and at the northern end of the lake is the beautiful and historic Purrum Beat homestead. The caravan park has its own ramp, which is maintained by John and is freely accessible whether you're staying at the park or not. One of the main reasons I've come to Purrum Beat is simply to chase a big brown trout. On a fishing trip last year, I saw John catch a magnificent 13 pounder. A fish like that is just the catch of a lifetime. My plan to finding these big fish was to simply find the bait fish these trout were feeding on and imitate them. Now, when we're talking hotspots, there's one important thing about Lake Purrum Beat that I think a lot of people don't know. It's full of redfin. That's correct, Billy. We're just outside the eel farm at the moment, and it's a really good spot in oh, anywhere from 25 to 40. Okay. Rightio, we found some redfin. Um, they're sitting at the 30 feet there, over near manifolds, and pretty thick, are you? Let's get in on them. There are huge schools of redfin in Purrum Beat. They are great eating and easy to catch. But most importantly, they could be one of the keys as to why we find such massive brown trout in the lake. They're easy to find too. Just use your sounder in 30 to 60 feet of water, and when you find them, simply drop a bait or a plastic to the bottom. These redfin can achieve a very respectable size in this lake as well. It's often just a matter of cycling through all the small ones to get to that kilo fish. Got him, John. Little guy, probably average, average for here. You get a feet feet out of them. There's no size limit on them. Redfin are yet another important forage fish in Purrum Beat, but my priority was to go and catch a trout. So to start with, I thought we'd do a bit of trolling. So I'm trolling my lure down at 60 feet at the moment. The fish are on the bottom to within probably about 70 feet deep in 100 feet of water. We're just trying to get one of them to rise up and bite the lure being towed behind the bomb on the downrigger. Big stack of them here. You on? Yep, on. Oh, little rainbow by the looks of it. Rainbow. Little rainbow. Even though this rainbow trout is the same species as those in Bull and Mary, you can see here how its body shape and colour vary. This is simply due to the difference in the salinity of the two lakes. Oh, yon. Yep.
Oh, it's a nice brown. Beautiful, John. Oh, it ah, belly. Thanks, mate. Well, <coughs> we're starting to get there. Brown trout, not a kilo. So it's not one of these big, big bruising trophies that you get in Purrumbeet. But nonetheless, I reckon if we keep working this shore here with these little minnows we're casting, I reckon it might, might do the trick today of me finding that big brown trout I'm after. Finding one of these leviathans is all about putting in hundreds of casts. But with night closing in, I was really running out of time. Tomorrow was my last chance to catch a big one. And with John having to work, it was getting even worse because it looked like I'd have to be fishing on my own. New days always bring a new set of opportunities, but really, this was gonna be my last chance. I'm using a redfin imitation to try to fool that big brown trout, and what happens? Another little cannibal redfin comes and knocks off my lure. Little redfin, bit of excitement, but no bananas. Once again, redfin were a good sign that my lure was working, but they didn't get me any closer to that big brown trout. These big trout have survived their way to the top of the food chain in this system, and that meant they've learnt what and what not to eat. With the sun setting and me seriously thinking about heading home, things started to subtly change. I saw a few big trout rise in my favourite corner, and then a boat right next to me hooked up onto a cracking trout. Greg McGlade is a specialist at slow trolling baits, and what a trout he's connected to. Even though it was starting to get dark, with this increase in activity, I decided to go and have another crack in my favourite corner. Then, right out of nowhere, this huge fish belted my lure right at the boat. Well, this is a nice fish. Now this is tough on your own, and it's maybe a bit, oh, that is what I call a brown trout. Big, big Purrumbeet buck brown, look at that. Now maybe that's gonna be five kilos, that is just enormous. What a fish. Twin crater lakes, if you can produce fish like this, brown trout, there's also rainbow trout in here, Chinook salmon, but by far, these browns would have to be the prime target in these lakes, just absolutely magnificent. I better get this guy back in the water pretty quickly and let him swim another day. Purrumbeet and Bullamere are two very, very special trout fisheries in Victoria and they have always enjoyed that reputation for fast-growing monster trout. We've learned a combination of three very important factors allows this to happen. Food, clear water, and even water temperatures are the keys as to why these fish grow so fast and so big. 